It's 8 a.m. in Istanbul and Syrian refugees are hoping to be hired. So you can see there just across the street what we think is the middleman selecting his crew for today's work. The chosen ones get on the bus. The youngest is just 15 years old. They're dropped off at a factory that makes clothes for the British High Street. They don't have work permits, so they can only work illegally. After a long shift, they're paid on the street. Some get little more than a pound an hour, well below the Turkish minimum wage. I meet up with one of them later to find out what clothes they are working on. Can I see the labels? I don't remember the names exactly as I don't know English, but I have the labels with me. That's Marks and Spencer. That's an iconic British brand. Marks and Spencer said our findings were extremely serious and unacceptable to MS. It's offering permanent legal employment to all affected workers and says we will do all we can to ensure that this does not happen again. The situation with refugees in Turkey is complex, but critics say the big brands have to take responsibility. It's not enough to say, you know, we didn't know about this. It, it's not our fault. They have a responsibility to monitor and to understand where their clothes are being made and what conditions they're being made in. We also found younger children at work. We go inside this workshop, posing as the owners of a new fashion business, and we immediately spot something. A jacket with an ASOS label. And on the factory floor, we find Syrian children at work. ASOS says it has zero tolerance for child labour. The company accepts its clothes were made here, but says it's not an authorised factory. We are identifying them because ASOS has offered to financially support any child workers so they can return to school. In total, Panorama found evidence of Syrian refugees working illegally on clothes for five major brands. Dara McIntyre, BBC News.